Alright everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I am once again attempting to dissolve through the glass, but this time I'm not going to flip it over, I'm going to try dissolving from the one side only. Uh, back when I did the first time, I thought that maybe uh, flipping it over would uh, decrease differential stress, but a lot of people seem to think that uh, that was a bad idea, and I agree, that might have been a bad idea. So here we go, I'm going to try again. Put some acid on there, and we're going to try to dissolve through it. So this is the hydrofluoric acid. I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit more lime on the glass itself because the vapor is getting off. We're kind of etching it. Maybe that will help prevent that. I am also adding a cover just to keep it from evaporating as fast. I do have the lab unheated, so there's not a whole lot of vaporization, which is probably a good thing that I'm doing this in winter. <laughs> All right, well, see you guys in a bit. Uh, could be several days to weeks. I don't know. Well, that settles that. Dissolving through from one side does not appear to work either. And it only took a week, so once it reached that middle layer, boom. Yep. In case you're wondering about the soda bottle bottoms, I was using those to help further hold down the fumes. Now let's take this, let's go measure how far through the glass it was able to dissolve. Okay, I've washed off all the residual acid and I've removed some of the silicone. Let's just pull a piece out of the middle there and measure it with the calipers. So, right there where the glass was being dissolved. Three millimeters. Three millimeters. Okay, and a piece of glass that had not been dissolved at all. 4.7. So it didn't get through as far as it did when I dissolved from both sides. I guess that is rather telling. So imagine this rectangle here is a piece of tempered glass as viewed from the edge on and each of these lines is one millimeter. I was able to dissolve through from one side about 1.7 millimeters, so it went through about this far. When I dissolved from both sides I was left with a piece of glass in the middle that was 1.2 millimeters, so I got through about two millimeters from the other side here. Something like that. You notice these two distances are about the same. So once I get through to about here, about half a millimeter from the center of the glass, that's when it explodes and it doesn't seem to matter if I go through one side or both sides. Since this video is fairly short, I figure I'll pad out the run time by answering a few of your questions from the last video. So I just added some hydrofluoric acid to that test tube. Now I'm going to add a couple drops of calcium acetate solution. There we are. You can see a white precipitate forms. That is calcium fluoride, which is insoluble. Incidentally, this is the same reason why hydrofluoric acid is a contact poison. It'll soak through the skin and do the same thing to the calcium in your blood which can be fatal if you get enough of the acid on you. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of hydrochloric acid. This is a stronger acid than the hydrofluoric is. You should be able to see, assuming everything goes well. Yeah, there we are. Still a little bit cloudy, but most of the calcium fluoride has redissolved. 
And what's happened is I've lowered the pH significantly. Hydrofluoric acid is not a strong acid, so the pH is actually not that low, even when high concentration. But the hydrochloric acid was able to significantly lower it. This pushed the equilibrium uh, more towards uh, calcium fluoride being soluble. Or to think of it another way, stronger acid took the calcium and calcium chloride is soluble. So a few people were wondering why I didn't use a mixture of acids to dissolve the glass faster. Like if it didn't form a calcium crust, it would have solved me a lot of problems. If I add in some more of the calcium acetate, you should be able to see why I wasn't able to just do that. You can see the solution became a lot more cloudy. That's because the calcium fluoride, even though its solubility has been increased, it's still not incredibly soluble, especially at low temperatures like this. So using a mixture of acids would only increase the complexity of the experiment. I would still need to get in here and scrape off the crusts periodically anyway, or use a very large volume of acid. I saw a lot of comments about heating the glass to remove its temper, and this should work, but you'd have to heat the entire piece evenly. Otherwise, it's still going to cause it to shatter. <laughs> Just a couple more things. When I add the acid to the lime, you can see that it effervesces. You would not expect that on a reaction with calcium hydroxide and an acid. It shouldn't produce gas. But calcium hydroxide is very good at absorbing carbon dioxide from the air, so samples usually contain some calcium carbonate. Also, you notice I put the acid in a glass tube, even though this acid is famous for dissolving glass. Well, borosilicate glass used for test tubes and beakers is actually fairly resistant to HF, especially when cold. So that's all I've got for now. If you haven't seen the first video, definitely go check it out. I'll put a link down in the description. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. At some point I'd like to try dissolving the tail off of a Prince Rupert's drop. So far though, I haven't been successful in making any.